Welcome viewers, Guy Seguin from SWF and we're here today to have a look at that CWB test plate uh, which falls under the CSA W471 standard. So is what I want to do today is I want to take that standard, I want to have a look at it in detail, I want to make sure there's no mistakes. Let's go through material prep, let's go through the procedure of tacking that plate up, welding it, cutting and bending. Stay tuned. Alright, let's get right into it. Welder qualification plates, CWB test plates, or simply test plates are structural qualification tests that fall under the CSA W471 standard here in Canada. So this standard provides the requirement for certification of companies involved in the fusion welding of carbon steel. So this includes qualification requirements for welders, welding procedures, and welding supervisors. You'll often hear from a welder that they are certified when in fact they are qualified. A welder is qualified and a welding company or testing facility is certified. So a structural welder in Canada must be qualified for each welding process and each position performed as a separate test. The qualification is valid for two years. Most sought out processes would be shielded metal arc welding and flux core arc welding. Positions can be welded in the 1GF, 2GF, 3GF or 4GF. Okay, let's have a look at the S-Class GF test assembly in the flat position with the SMAW process. The most common test plate assembly is the S-Class ticket. This means the qualification plate is a groove fillet weld with a backing bar. The T classification is an open route. You have three different options to perform this test. However, option number one is the most common. Let's start with two pieces of 3 eighths of an inch thick or 10 millimeters thick by three inches wide and six inches long. One with a 90 degree edge prep and the other with a 30 degree edge prep. Your third piece is a quarter inch thick or six millimeters by two inches wide by a minimum of six inches long. I like to cut this one at eight inches for an extra run on and run off plate. Okay, your one GF, three GF and four GF test have a half an inch root opening or 13 millimeters and your 2GF test has a 5 16 or 8 millimeter root opening. After prepping your plates to the proper specs you want to make sure your parts are free of any burrs that can cause an improper fit up. I like to file them down. At this point you can remove the mill scale from the weld zone. Make sure the jig you are using is free of any spatter or weld metal. If you don't have a jig I suggest using a spacer. Regardless of the method you use, you want to make sure your plate is accurate. 90% of welding is fit up. Okay, now it's time to tack up that plate. So regardless of the process you use to fit up your plate, be sure your tacks are large enough, but no larger than 3 quarters of an inch max from each end. Now that we have a plate tacked up, it's time for welding. Wrong! The next step is to have your plate stamped with your ID, the position and the coupon number. Even if it's just a practice plate, you want to make sure you can identify the plate properly. This will help you determine where you went wrong if needed. Stop starts are marked at 4.5 inches from each end on the square side and the bevel side. I recommend welding this plate in stringer beads and in three passes for the root. You're always more likely to succeed with stringers opposed to weaves. The first weld is produced on the square side of the joint. The fillet size shall not be any larger than 8 millimeters thick or 5 sixteenths of an inch and must be stopped where the inspector indicates. After this weld is complete, be sure to inspect for any slag inclusions or spatter. Use something sharp and pointy to scrape out any slag if needed. I use a piece of tungsten. Here I noticed a big chunk of spatter, so I chiseled it out. Welding over spatter will not fuse with the next weld and can cause lack of fusion in those spots. The second weld is produced on the 30 degree bevel side of the joint and must be stopped where the inspector indicates. When putting in this pass, you want to make sure you leave enough room in the middle for the third pass. Having too large a fillet welds on the side walls can leave a valley in the center, resulting in lack of fusion in the middle on the third pass. 
The bottom image is an example of what you don't want to have happen. The fillet welds are almost touching. This will cause the lack of fusion down the middle into the backing bar. The above example is more suitable. The welds are flatter with enough space in the middle for the third pass. Like always, it's important to clean your welds fully in between passes. Your slag should chip off easily. This tells me that you have a good technique. If there's any undercut, be sure there's no slag caught in it. Use a sharp pick if needed. The next step is to complete the tie-in. Within the weld zone, scratch ahead and return to the crater on the previous weld. Keep in mind, these are the most important welds of the test plate. If a weld is going to fail, it's most likely to happen on this tie-in, or restart. Now it's time to weld the third root pass. It's time for you to marry both the fillet on the square side, the bevel side, and the backing bar together. The next step is to continue filling the groove. Your final fill pass should be as close to the top as possible without going over. The completed test coupons should be welded at least flush to the plate thickness. Cap height should not exceed 3 mil or 1 8 of an inch. Any undercut depth should not exceed 1 mil or a 32nd of an inch. The final tip is to make sure you fill in the ends of the plate to the full cross section with no craters. Once the backing bar is removed, it's time to remove any leftover material on the back side of that. I like to do a little bit of pre-grind. I'll start by removing the tacks off in each corner, and then I'll lift the leftover backing bar off with a chisel and sort of rock it back and forth until it, until it removes itself. Make sure you clamp your plate down for this, as uh, this plate can move around quickly. So once you've got the once you've got the backing bar completely removed, um, you want to give it a few swipes on the back side of that root and bring it down at least flush. Again, this is a pre-grind, and then I'm going to move on to cutting it and then finish it off at a later time. Now that the back has been ground down, it's time to give the cap a pre-grind. I'm going to take this down and leave about an eighth of an inch left on it. Be sure you don't grind off any of your stamps, especially if it's on test day. You, want to, you don't want to remove any of the CWB stamps on there. Let's process that plate. Regardless of the method you use to process your plate, according to the standard, the test coupon should be an inch and a half in size. I use the band saw, it is a bit cleaner. Start with the test plate face down in the saw. From the saw blade, Measure and cut three quarters of an inch. This piece is discarded, you do not need it. Now draw your piece out and measure an inch and a half from the blade. You will do this two more times. Now that you have three coupons, two of them will be processed into root bends and one of them into a face bend. Okay, let's finish off the grinding. Coupon number two, which is the face bend, will be ground down flush on both sides. A little trick I like to do on coupon one and three is to leave a sixteenth of an inch of material on the face portion of the coupon and grind a sixteenth of an inch off the back side. This removes a sixteenth from one side but makes up for it on the other. The standard says the coupon should be three eighths of an inch in the weld zone. The reason I do this is to make sure I've cleared all of the leftover backing bar. Grind marks should be parallel to the bend. Be sure to not overgrind on your plates, as some inspectors are less tolerant of this and will fail you. The last thing to do before the bend test is to give a radius on the edges of your coupons. This is to relieve the sharp edge that could potentially cause a crack or tear in the plate. Be sure not to exceed 1 8 of an inch. Okay, now it's time to destructively test the welds. As mentioned earlier, coupon 2 is a face bend and coupons 1 and 3 are root bends. Here you can see me on the hydraulic press coming down with the die on the face to obtain the root bends and down on the root side to obtain the face bend. You want to make sure your die comes down directly in the center of the weld for an even bend. After the plates are bent, it's now time to inspect. The standard tells us that any defect larger than 1 8 of an inch in any direction is considered a fail, as well as any tear from the edge of the plate cannot exceed a quarter of an inch. Also, 
The combination of any defect larger than a sixteenth, but no larger than an eighth, cannot exceed three eighths. All materials, including electrodes and coupons, are supplied by the test center. Electrodes must be a low hydrogen 7018, one eighth of an inch or larger in diameter. No grinders, saw blades, files, or methods that remove deposited metal or alter weld bead profile are permitted. Okay, everybody, that's your S-Class ticket in the flat position, SMAW. I really hope you learned something out of this. I hope you gained something today. There is one thing I do want to say before we sign off is be nice to your welding inspector. Listen to him. If he asks you to do something, don't argue with him. He's the one who's going to sign off on your test plate. So like always, keep your lenses clean and be safe.